That's a shake. That's milk and ice cream. You know, if you were smart as you thought you were, Vincent, you wouldn't have got got. I'm here to argue there's three essential ingredients to a good milkshake, milk, ice cream, and syrup, or something else that functions like a syrup. The syrup helps a ton texturally as well as tastefully. It could just be a simple syrup, equal parts granulated sugar and water, by weight or volume, their ballpark same density, bring to a boil, keep it there a minute max, pour it off, let it cool. Milkshakes come out way better when everything is cold. All your ingredients and your tools. I'll show you the best vessel I've found for blending milkshakes in at home, a big mason jar. One quart, about a liter, chilled in the freezer. And I'd pull the ice cream out at the last second. I'm using sweet cream ice cream, which is just plain. No vanilla, no nothing. It gives me a blank canvas. And it's from this beloved local dairy here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Look at that natural caramel color just from the milk fat and the eggs. I'm scooping in half the pint. That's two to 50 mils. And instead of plain milk, I'm reaching for evaporated milk. I love love this stuff. I use it all the time. In a shake, it does the exact same thing as regular milk plus a spoon of milk powder, which is a trick that a lot of people use. It just makes a stronger milk flavor and a smoother texture from the casein protein. Really just a quarter cup to start with, 60 mils or something. Big glug of vanilla since there's none in the ice cream. The expensive stuff does usually taste better. And then like a spoon or two of simple syrup. Without the syrup, a milkshake is either under sweet or over thick, depending on the milk content. And hey, just for fun, let's do a I'll go butter fingers. Let's do an Oreo, maybe two. Now, you could blend this in any big, narrow thing. The mason jar is just the best thing in my house. As long as I've chilled it, glass is pretty thermally conductive. It'll melt your ice cream if it's not cold, same as metal. And I love doing this with a stick blender instead of a countertop style blender. The immersion blender is smaller, it's cheaper, it's easier to clean, it gives you more control. You can reach into corners where the ice cream isn't getting mixed, and you can feel the texture. With a little experience, you can feel through the blender if you need more milk to get this into a drinkable texture. There's no point in making a milkshake if you're going to put it into a thermally conductive cup that is not chilled. It'll melt in 30 seconds if the glass is not frosty. But right now, that's too thick to suck up with a straw, which is how milkshakes usually are when I buy them out these days. Maybe restaurants do that because they think proportionally more ice cream equals more quality. Maybe it's because they think it's undersweet if you do too much milk, but that's what the syrup fixes. And I say there's no point in milkshakes if you can't drink them. Otherwise, it's just ice cream served with the wrong utensil. And you can easily add more milk or syrup or whatever it needs right there in the glass. So be conservative up front and you can't lose. Maybe they put in too much ice cream because it's colder that way and that gives them more time to serve it before it melts. But the frosty glass protects us, just as the sponsor of this video protects us, Surfshark. Let me thank them. Hey, that's me. The little S up there is the frosty glass of the internet. Before you do anything on your computer or your phone, just log in through one of Surfshark's encrypted servers and nobody on your Wi-Fi network can snoop on you. Nor can anyone deny you service on the basis of your location. Like if you want to watch something and the provider says, sorry, not available in your country, just try going through a Surfshark server in the country they want. Boom. This is a great way to get around government censorship too. And Surfshark has servers like almost literally everywhere. Surfshark's VPN is amazing if you're traveling again, and it comes with a whole suite of other security and privacy tools anonymous search, things to guard against identity theft, you name it. And you can sign up right now for 83% off, plus an extra three months for free. Just use my code, Adam Ragusea. All one word. That and my link are in the description. 83% off. Thank you, Surfshark. Now, right here is another key to a better milkshake experience at home. A small cocktail glass. Highball, rocks glass, old-fashioned glass. This one is eight ounces to the brim. These chill great because they're so thick, and they're small which means you can fill it to the brim with a reasonable portion of milkshake. Two scoops of ice cream is perfect for that glass, like a quarter of the pint. Splash of evaporated milk to start with, and instead of making syrup, you could summon forth the upside-down bear. It's a ready-made syrup and an underrated flavor pairing with ice cream. Also goes great with berries, the last of the blackberries from my vine. There's a lot of squirrels with purple paws running around here. I see you. Not only is this big mason,
mason jar the perfect dimensions, but that tapered lip at the top works as a splatter guard. And because this is headed into a merely eight ounce glass, we can fill it all the way to the top, which looks a lot nicer. To fill the pint glass all the way up, you need almost a pint of ice cream. Restaurants use the whole pint. That's why they give you the little bit of excess in the mixing vessel next to your glass. I don't need to drink a whole pint of ice cream, but I do need that dollop of real whipped cream, just cold cream in a bowl, whip until you get stiffish peaks, a little vanilla and sugar, delicious. It's popular on milkshakes because it provides heterogeneity to an otherwise homogenous dessert. That tastes great, but strongly of honey. I don't want that honey taste every day, so let's go back to syrup. And simple syrup is a very easy way of extracting flavor out of other things like plant parts. My new place has like endless beds of mint for some reason, got to use it in something, but leaves and such you want to put in after the syrup has pretty much stopped bubbling. If you stir them in when it's still really boiling, the syrup will be brown and taste cooked, not fresh, as this will as soon as I strain that out and chill it. I want a lot of mint flavor in there so that I don't have to add too much sweetness proportionally to my ice cream. Big splash of evaporated milk and nobody has to know if we sneak in a little green food coloring. Splash of vanilla really complements mint. It softens it. And chocolate chips now because I need them to get pulverized with everything else. The chocolate bits have to be small enough to pass through a straw, otherwise it's not a drink. I just got this shake from a hipster burger place with chunks of cookie dough so big that they couldn't pass through the double wide straw they served it with. That's not a drink. This is a drink, loose enough that I can sip it through a normal compostable straw. How about a chocolate syrup instead? The benefit of making it yourself is you can use much higher quality cocoa powder and you can put in way more of it. This is equal parts sugar, water, and cocoa by volume. I like to let the cocoa actually boil for a few seconds. That deepens the flavor off the heat, and this is a job for a tiny whisk. It takes some stirring, but it's amazing how much cocoa you can fit in there. And when you chill it, it has this amazing gooey ganache-like texture, you could frost a cake with that. It's great in the milkshake or on it or both. An alternative to making a flavored syrup is to sweeten your shake with a big spoonful of fruit preserve, any kind. This is a marmalade for you, Brits. Couple of scoops of ice cream, splash of evaporated milk, buzz, 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 and well, nobody has to know. Red plus yellow equals orange, right? Hey, this time let's plop some cream in the bottom of the glass, shake on top, and another dollop of cream in the top. This has got an upscale creamsicle thing going on that I really Really like, but this whole video, people from the New England region of the United States have been screaming, that's not a shake, that's a frap. A shake with syrup is a frap, and it's our thing. Well, here's something that should make you happy. Marshmallow fluff from Somerville, Mass. You want to make a New Englander cry? Make them a fluffernutter sandwich, marshmallow cream, and peanut butter on white bread. They all grew up with it. And we can use the fluff in place of syrup. Get in there, you. Big spoonful of peanut butter, too, a couple of scoops of ice cream, and we'll probably need a little extra milk milk to counteract the thickening power of those mix-ins. Can you make milkshakes without a power tool? I don't think so. You have to warm the ice cream too much to make it whiskable. It's just a glass of melted ice cream at the end. There's a reason the milkshake popularized when and where it did, early 20th century US. Only the new electrical blenders could get you something so smooth and frosty and cold. And I love how the cold here has made the little bits of marshmallow go firm. They're small enough to go up your straw, but they still chew a little like marshmallows. And I guess a fluffernutter is supposed to have bread, so mini Nilla wafers? That one might not look pretty, but it's totally the one I'm going to make again for myself when you're not looking.